Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also, good morning. So today, as promised, I wanted to go ahead and show you guys my third SSF character, and boy, will you be surprised that it is actually not Righteous Fire for the first time in six months. Um, so about nine months ago, I think it was nine months ago, I actually tried playing a Bone Shatter Jug build. Now, this was before Unbreakable or anything else. Um, there was still the, the untiring note on Juggernaut, but after playing Bone Shatter for the first time, I have to say, it was one of the cleanest skills I've played for a while. I know a lot of people hate on melee, and even I can agree that bossing on melee can be a lot of work compared to the average like spellcaster build. There's a lot more things you need to maintain, like your war chief totem, your and your other war chief totem, your vol war chief totem, making sure you keep up your fortify stacks, popping your berserk. We, we won't talk about that. Anyway, though, what we are going to talk about is the smoothness and the fluidity of Bone Shatter itself. So there's an interesting mechanic. Before I get started, I'm going to show some of my gear, and I'm just going to jump right into a map. There's so much to talk about, but let's get started. Before I get started with this, I want to say a big shout out to three content creators. I learned a lot about Bone Shatter from just lurking in their streams. I haven't intentionally attempted to, like copy anyone's pob but you know just like playing a righteous fire build there's only so many things you can do so first one goes out to garatha i learned a lot about just watching his streams playing bone shatter the way he progresses next one is going to be karn karn plays a shit ton of bone shatter slayer uh, he was actually the reason i wanted to play bone shatter in the first place and third person is uh who um who uh streams extremely frequently and i've hosted him from time to time and i saw his interaction he does with bear's girdle and it just seemed really really interesting so, with that being said, let me just talk about my character. So, <clears throat> um, we're going to jump into a map real quick, but the general uh, thing of my character is we are using axes. Typically with Bone Shatter, you're going to be axe-based or you're going to be two-hand maces. Maces are more built on the defensive side. They have built-in chill. They have bigger stun. Bigger stun equal bigger AoE. They have an easier time stun-locking like your, uh, your map bosses and even higher. Axes are more aggressive. They are... I don't know if they're faster by nature, but they have Onslaught on the passive tree. So by nature, they're going to do more DPS. They're going to feel quicker um, as you're going. They're less likely to stun unless you have a much better gear. Um, so I'm currently running a Lore Weave Eternal Damnation setup yet again. Same setup. Not the same one as my other characters. So this is actually a brand new Lore Weave and a brand new Eternal Damnation. The reasoning for this, don't mind the, the puppies in the background. The reasoning for this is because um, it's for mapping mainly. Because of Lore of Eternal Damnation, I'm not going Spell Suppression, so I can run maps with minus Spell Suppression. And because Lore of Eternal Damnation, I can run minus Max maps. So by going this setup, I basically gain plus two map mods. Technically, as a Juggernaut, I feel like you could like move away from going Spell Suppression, but it's definitely a lot more difficult, so I would rather just go with this setup till I feel more comfortable. Um, so my links are currently Close Combat, Impale, Awakened Melee Physical, Anomalous Bone Shatter, uh, what do I have here, Brutality, and Ruthless Support. As for my helmet, um, my helmet is basically Determination, uh, I can't see this, Pride, Flesh and Stone, and Enlighten. The Flesh and Stone is something I acquired via Charisma. Normally you would, I believe, Anoint Panopticon, but I don't know, I prefer Flesh and Stone, it feels better for mapping. Um... If you look at my helmet, you'll notice that there's a lot of conversion on it. Conversion is a very good way to mitigate self-damage on Bone Shatter. Furthermore, uh, you'll notice that there's physical take and recoup there. This is something I have added to Jug to make it a bit more interesting. So I actually have double recoup rings. So 28% of all damage I take is recouped back to my character. This works really well in conjunction with um, Untiring which basically means I'm self-mitigating my own Bone Shatter, which is then giving me life regen, and I'm also recouping a portion of damage, which does not play on the sheet, but you will absolutely see what I am talking about. So, uh, other than that, I'm just going to kind of hover over my gear. You can kind of see exactly what we have on it. I'm not going to go through every single thing. Um, this is basically the pure single target setup, which is Warchief Totem Ancestral Warchief. Really only use it for, like, bosses and essences. Um, and then here we have what? Frost Blink, Ancestral Cry, Blood Rage, War Banner, and then the last one is Warlord's Mark, Life Tap, Cast One Damage Taken, Molten Shell. As you are smacking mobs with Bone Shatter, self damage procs, hits, and then basically procs your Cast One Damage Taken, which will apply Warlord's Mark. If you want a boss, it's much better to use Vulnerability, and then just Leap Slam and Berserk. 
And then the last thing to talk about is I can actually run no regen maps on this character. We have zero um, mono leech. What I have done instead is I come down here for two points and I take revelry. Revelry gives increased effect of non-curse auras from your skills. The reason this is good is it scales your pride and it scales your flesh and stone, I believe. Furthermore, we take the recoup node for 10% of damage taken recouped as mana. So my self damage with bone shatter actually recoups as MP, fueling our entire build, basically. Uh, what's nice about this is that we can run no regen maps. I'm not reliant on it. And then I have a lethal pride located right here, which is giving us... 20% armor, 20% melee damage, reduced enemy stun threshold, 5% strength, 20% fire res, 1% life regen, 20 strength, and 20% fizz. With that being said, because I know, you know, <clears throat> for some players, it may not be easy to acquire a six link right away. So I'm going to intentionally remove some links here. So I'm going to drop out like brutality. I'm going to drop out awakened melee physical. And now we are mapping on a four link. I cannot do this yet. And I believe my axe is... Maybe 630 PDPS, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I'm grinding to get a better axe right now on this character, and what we actually did was basically just grinded for a fractured base and then used essences. All right. Ooh, two extra chaos, let's go, dude. Sorry if there's uh, some noise in the background, that would be the rain that is currently falling. Also had a few people ask me about like sound in the background. I've recently been using another fan just because of stuff. Um, so I've went ahead and removed that. So let me know if it feels or sounds any better. So the basic thing about Bone Shatter is, based off of the duration of the stun, I would have bigger AoE if I had all my links in, but based off the duration of the stun, you will actually have a kind of like a AoE come out, and that AoE is what allows you to clear packs so smoothly, even on, you know, basic four link, right? The single target is obviously going to show, but we'll talk about the single target when we get there. This character is rocking about 60,000 armor, along with 4 endurance charges and like 15% conversion. So it's pretty tanky against physical. Against elemental, we are 78 with fortify and eternal damnation. Pretty tanky against that. Uh, damage over time does hurt us, but not when we are ramping. Ramping, you will see what I mean shortly. Then you also get the nice defensive layer of basically stunlocking almost everything, which is really nice. In this setup, I am not stunlocking most map bosses, unless maybe I get a ruthless proc. Um, usually, I don't think I'm stunning map bosses. I usually stun most mobs, though. I think even like essences, I don't typically stun. The other nice thing about this is with Bear's Girdle, we get an extra 20 rage, um, and we also get crush. So the benefit of the rage is playing with 75 rage. I don't know how to explain it. I forgot exactly what each point of rage does, but it's attack speed and movement speed and damage. Mainly attack speed and movement speed just feel so good on the character compared to spellcaster builds I normally play. So that is extremely nice. Here's a guy who is fizz resistant. I cannot do this yet. I think I have favor to farm Arby and Harvest with this character. Okay, so here's the boss. I'm gonna just drop one totem so you can see me kind of ramp. If you look at my life regen, you'll see what I'm talking about. I could do a lot more damage here if if I was actually dropping like the War Chief totem and using Berserk and using a six link, but you know, I'm on a four link right now. So just to show the, the life regen. The nice thing about this is that this is also not including the recoup damage I was talking about. This is simply the life regen. Recoup doesn't actually show on the uh, the character sheet. So now I'm going to plug in those two supports. So Brutality goes in and the Awakened 
melee fizz also moves in. All of a sudden, everything is a lot more chunky. I think the next couple of points are just pretty much going into straight HP or damage. Haven't really decided yet. This character, ironically, I play really reckless. We are 95, no deaths yet. So that's pretty nice. You can see on the on the rare mobs, it's a really big difference on the, the like fat meaty hits. I think one of the really nice things I like about Bone Shatter is you can kind of just like go in a straight line with your progression. What I mean by that is like you don't have to go out of your way to farm for like an Elder Helm or you don't need to rely on flipping your gems to 21. I mean, Bone Shatter will greatly benefit from a 21 version, so maybe that's not the best example. But for the most part, you don't have to do a shit ton of crazy farming like my Righteous Fire build, for example, to just progress. I mean, granted, the RF build has, you know, its own advantages. I'm just highlighting Bone Shatters, right? It feels a lot more straightforward to play, I guess you could say, versus RF. What do we have in here? Yum, yum. Perk. Yeah, so that's pretty much the character. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the passive tree just slightly, and then that will pretty much be the end. So, um, started over here. I started leveling with, like, I don't know, some random attack skill. I think it was Molten Strike. If you want to be efficient, you think you grab Splitting Steel, or whatever the steel skills are called. I just path through, you know, grab Born to Fight. You need to grab Versatility ASAP if you want to be able to use, I think, Frost Blink. Uh, also, the percent global accuracy will help later. Um, I guess I can't talk about the whole tree because I don't remember exactly how I navigated per se, but I'm kind of just explaining the nodes on the tree. So, um, Harvester of Foes picks up into your later maps. You just need to be careful with scaling Impale Effect because Impale Effect is big damage, but it doesn't affect your stun. So it really depends if you're trying to just get more damage or you're trying to go for the stun route. Um, Kinetic Impacts is really good for a chance of double damage, stun duration, and you can get two hand mastery for a more stun duration. So this is a very nice wheel. Um, to try to get your stunning set up. You also get reduced enemy stun threshold, which is a rare stat to find, especially with axes. Um, moving forward, um, this is all really good. So Axe Mastery, that's the kind of like the gory explosion you see with enemies uh, killed by your hits or destroyed. Slaughter is huge for maximum rage and also just a lot of attack speed. Bone Shatter gets multipliers for every stack of trauma you have, which is that self-damage component that you mitigate as Juggernaut. So that's kind of where all of it kind of starts. Um, obviously taking, you know, your armor. I have a Watcher's Eye, but I didn't really bring it up because it's your hits intimidate enemies for four seconds when you are using Pride. You could just take Cleaving, or you could just have an Awakened Melee Physical 5, and you don't really need this, so that's basically a free two-point jewel. It's kind of just like a life node. Um, moving down further, Inexorable is really, like, really nice to grab. Uh, Inexorable works because chance to gain Endurance Charge when you are hit, Bone Shatter hits you. So you actually can trigger your own endurance charges with inexorable. And the reason why this is good on a jug, more so anyone, is you don't need to take unflinching, uh, which means you can take your other ascendancy nodes. Moving down, fortify wheel. If you're super lazy, take the top route. Um, melee hits can fortify. This means you literally don't need to use a fortify gem. Call to arms allows you to go instant on your ancestral cry, which gives you melee strike range and two additional targets. So it's pretty nice. Um, Tribal Fury, it, I don't think Tribal Fury actually does anything, but it opens up the Strike Mastery for one additional target. I kind of want to get rid of this, but I think I really need the Strike Range, so I'm leaving it. I do have a Cluster Jewel, which is definitely optional. I have Iron Breaker for extra Fizz Damage Overwhelm because I run minus Fizz Resist maps, or plus Fizz Resist maps, yeah. Because, like I said, my character is more of a mapper, 
So Iron Breaker plus Crush from Bear's Girdle and the physical damage reduction here helps massively from what I'm aware of when mobs are in a Fizz Resist map and roll Fizz Resist on top of that. Also got Battle Harden for extra armor. It's pretty nice. I think I would prefer having like Force Multiplier for double damage, which is right here. Or there's another one that gives like 10 all res, which is really good. Um, so I have a reduced effective shock on me on my jewel here, along with the Pantheon for reduced effective shock. This is actually really good too, because cannot be or blinded means that your accuracy doesn't get lowered for precise technique, which we'll talk about in just a minute. So anyway, this is basically a reduced shock effect jewel to stack with the Pantheon. So I barely get shocked. Um, same thing with this one, but this is just mainly life and res. Moving across, you get Wrecking Ball. You can also take the 60% armor if all of the sockets on your uh, weapon are red. So that is a huge source of armor. Uh, Hatchet Master gives you Onslaught. This is why I was talking about axes earlier. And then I have Grand Rage on hit. I don't know how beneficial this is, but I just have it for now. Uh, coming across, you've got Golem's Blood. Cloth and Chain is really good for um, armor in general with Ellie Res. And mine also has reduced enemy stun threshold from my Lethal Pride. Moving up, you've got Destroyer. I pathed in through Accuracy because I just kind of prefer having it right now. Attack speed is a bit more damage. Uh, Master of the Arena, Art of the Gladiator, move across. If you're not doing this Revelry setup, you definitely want to get some Leech somewhere. You can start with this node until you have things fleshed out. But this is not the way you traverse the tree. In fact, now I remember, you pretty much beeline right across here like this. And the reason why you beeline is you want to get precise technique which is 40% more damage if accuracy rating is higher than your maximum life, never deal crit. Then you'll typically grab Withered Hunter until you can gear out of it, or if you're using Precision or something else. As for the Jug Ascendancy, um, I believe I went Undeniable first, um, Untiring second, or other way around, Untiring first, Undeniable second, then I went Unbreakable into Unstoppable. That's pretty much the character, like I said, so... Uh, if I like the character more and I play it longer, I will have some more footage for you guys, but I think I'm going to be slowing down how much I play PoE for the next week uh, and then probably jump back into it. My Relic has just gained charges. That's why these kind of just keep flashing up. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. So I hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourself. Hope you guys are enjoying your time in Ray class. And uh, I will see you guys all tomorrow. Don't forget, if you like the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash box, except for Sundays.